Hello, everyone. Welcome. We are poll on the call. We are back. <laughs> My name is Mandy Mack. And I am Chris Rivers. <laughs> and today we are here with episode number 26. And we're going to talk to you a little bit about the different ways you can make money with pole dance. Because you can. It doesn't have to be just a hobby. It can be a whole lifestyle. <laughs> and there's so many different ways you can make money in um, so many different ways. I think I just said that. <laughs> but that is okay. So excited. Uh, and we guarantee you there's more ways than you think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's probably more ways than we're going to list um, in this episode too. And we want to hear them from you. So once you listen to this episode and we missed something, please let us know because we all want to make that money. <laughs> um, so I guess to start is the obvious stripping. Yes. <laughs> really how I started my pole dancing journey. Um, and it helped pay for school. Um, and I mean, that's really kind of what people unfortunately go to and what we're trying to, I guess, separate stripping and pole dance, but it is a big way to make money and it is important and there's nothing wrong with stripping, which everybody should know. <laughs> uh, do you have anything to say on stripping? Uh, yes, I also started in stripping. I'm wearing my former retired stripper shirt. <laughs> and I was laughing about it because I literally was stripping um, 20 years ago and this was in the 2000s, early 2000s, 2000 to 2003. Um, and this was before cell phones, you guys. <laughs> so I'm a grandma stripper, but yeah, that's one of the, I think it's one of the best ways, uh, most fun ways to make money um, as a pole dancer. And the way that you dance is much different than like in the pole dance class too. You have to be much slower. Um, and like, you know, you don't want to use all of your energy doing your biggest, best tricks for the strip club. <laughs> but yeah, so that's a um, one of the ways you can make money. Um, yeah. Chris, do you have anything else to add? Um, and I think it's, um, it's important to ask, um, add, like stripping is not what you think. People think that, oh, stripper, a lot of misconceptions um, with strippers that Lord, what are some misconceptions? They're hoes, they're sex addicts, things like that. If they're money hungry, I mean, which is kind of true because we are in there to make that money. Everyone is <laughs> money hungry. <laughs> uh, stripping is not about being touched. It's not about sex. It's about fulfilling a fantasy that that client may need. A lot of strip clubs, especially depending on the state, you are not allowed to touch them. You're not allowed to do sexual things. It is not about sex. I think that is so important. Um, it is dancing and fulfilling that fantasy and making that money. And if someone does try to touch you inappropriately, you have the right to kick them out and, you know, do what you need to do. Um, I think it's so important that people know that, especially if you haven't been to a strip club because you think it's going to be crazy. It probably will be a good time, but <laughs> um, it really is just a great way to work out. Um and like you said, taking your time and pacing yourself, because sometimes you're there five, six, seven hours. And to be doing all those tricks in the beginning, you'll be by the end of the night, like F this. Uh, uh. <laughs> but I do think, um, I just wanted to say that. I don't know if y'all listen also, <laughs> if not, okay. <laughs> yes. Well, you're right that um, it's, it's quite different, like working, working at a club. Cause you're kind of like a salesperson for yourself. Cause you want to, you know, build a, a really relationship with the client. You have to kind of like find out what the client is there for. Um, and, and be a good talker <laughs> and also like a business person too. Cause you have to know when to like move on and not waste your time with, with someone who's not going to give you any money. And um, actually I shouldn't, before I said, you don't have to do your biggest, best tricks, but like, that could be like your thing um, as a stripper. Like you could be the one who like, you know, drops from the ceiling and all of those things. But yeah, and and, and pole dancing came from stripping too. So like that's the heart and soul of, of where pole dancing came from. So um, yeah, the <laughs> that's it. 
Yes. Was it Chinese poll? It was kind of like a sexy poll, right? But very crazy. I don't even remember. I looked on the poll, the history of poll, but I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll we'll have to do another episode about all of the yeah. Oh, and, and I think like the general consensus is what was it def- like all pole dance definitely came from stripping and all, you know. I think might have been yeah and that well it was in the circus which is a little bit different um and the circus was kind of we'll get into we'll get into all of that later so for sure so our next way to make money with pole dancing is teaching pole becoming a certified pole instructor um and we have a whole episode about that yes (laughs) Um, there's so many ways to get certified, um, which, like Mandy Mack just said, we have a whole episode, and it includes the list in the comments. You can check that out on YouTube or our podcast on our website. All the links in the comments, of course. Um, what do you want to say about certifications and things like that? Um, I guess I'll say, like, about teaching pole. I love it. I mean, I was a stripper, and I teach pole. Uh, um, I, I mean, I, don't, I didn't do two simultaneously but as far as like the two go they're both equally fun I love both of them um as far as making money (laughs) definitely made more money stripping but that's okay um we make it work we're trying to figure things out creative solutions you know especially in these ridiculous times we have the gas prices rising up so much but um yeah teach and pull is a fulfilling way to share your love of the art that we all do. And um, yeah, you can also like become a studio owner too. That's another way you can make money. Um, maybe, making, maybe making less money than just teaching you guys. Just kidding. <laughs> Certification and teach privately. Um, I also, there's Cape Cod Pool Parties, which is an example. She started her own mm-hmm traveling pole party things so many ways yeah. to use certification and do it you can become a life coach um, we interviewed jamie wong pole dancer life coach or um, we also interviewed conditioning pole coach fran so many things you can do with that certification to make money but like mandy said stripping was probably one of the best ways um although i do like teaching pole i think it's pretty good money it can be pretty good money um and you, I like the flexibility of making your own schedule for the most part, which is pretty cool. Yes. And then as far as like, everyone's going to be like, oh, why don't you still strip? It's because I didn't like being a salesperson. I don't yeah. like being a salesperson. So that's why I don't strip anymore. That was like the end game for me. Uh, <laughs> you're tired of the same pitch over and over again. Yes. Um, I and st- I just wanted to dance. <laughs> I, same thing. Um, it was to pay for school. Now I have a family, a partner. Um, I'm sure he would let me experience that somewhere else, not in this area. That's another reason because the strip clubs out in this area. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I would definitely recommend going far out of your town if you want to work in a strip club. Um, but yeah, you kind of sometimes grow out of it. And if you don't grow out of it, that is okay. Do you? Mm-hmm. I lifelong strippers and they're still making that money yes Um, just now i'm i know where i am in my life and i'm heading towards more online stuff (laughs) (laughs) and there is online stripping too we have um you know several performers rented our studio to do online strip clubs which was so amazing um because in the zoom you could do like a breakout um group and and you can have like the one-on-one um like almost like the point of view lap dance you know, without anyone touching you, which is even more amazing. And I actually, I said, if I came back to stripping, I would do the online one because it was much more of my speed at at this point. (laughs) Hmm. Uh, Which I guess would bring us into our next way to make money with pole dancing, Um, like creating your own, let me see, Patreon or OnlyFans or just for fans or some kind of like subscription thing where people are like your little fanhoods, friends, family, um, whatever can subscribe to you and pay like a monthly fee to support you and help you what you do. It's a great way for a side hobby. Um, it's a great way for people who love you to kind of support you, even if they don't watch your content. 
Um, there, you can set up different tiers, like have them help you with one dollar a month, five dollars a month, twenty dollars a month, and you can also break it up like this is child friendly content, or if you want this, pay a little more for a little more sex here. That is another way to um, make money, like she said, online. Um, yeah, like and- if you're really good at making videos or tutorials, and you enjoy like or like your combos, and you like to show them in a cool way. And, and you're getting a lot of views on TikTok or whatever, put those as paid. Like people are paid to see those and enjoy your content. Yeah. <laughs> especially now everything is going online, especially after everything with Corona, we learned so much can be online. People are heading to the online platforms to mm-hmm. learn pole dancing. And with gas prices the way they are, I'm sure it will continue to increase with online and stuff like that. Yes. Um, it is a good side hustle. Um, I mean, you right, could it's all- kind of like passive income too, because once you put it up there, people, I mean, you still have to like advertise for it, but once yeah. it's there, people just get it. Exactly. And it's nice, a nice monthly change. And if you really work to monetize it, it could be like a substantial income. Yes. Um, of course, talking about the online and making subscriptions, you could do the YouTube and make money that way. It takes a little bit longer with their monetization process because you need a thousand subscribers and at least 10,000 video watches within, or no, 10,000 minutes of video watch time within six months um, to start getting ads on your videos, which those ads do pay you a lot when people come to them, which is a good source of income but it does take you a little bit longer. Um, And then we're still online. Um, I don't know if this counts, social media or is that? No, I guess that'll be another way. (laughs) (laughs) Well, can we make money off of this social media? Yes, you can. I'm uh, actually currently working. Oh, you already know I'm a brand ambassador for certain things. I'm working on ambassador stuff for poll things, which you can get money posting um, like things for poll. Like, hey, I tried this grip uh, oh. stuff and they'll pay you depending on how many followers you have. When I started, it was like 25, 50 bucks a post. But now it's going up to 100, a couple hundred. And I know some people who are getting quite a couple thousand just because they have a lot of followers so you can can get sponsored yes and Ah. it's and you post it and share it to your followers and then once you post it tag them they know they'll send you the money it's really cool that is one way to utilize your social media um also that link in your social media that bio if you don't have a link tree you need to make it you can add all your content there to have everyone follow it you can put your just for fans or patreon subscription there so they can follow it um how else um and you can create little shops and put that on your social media like if you want to create special poll t-shirts or poll bags you can do that on like teespring or cafe press and then add that shop to your social media people love that poll wear stuff so many ways to use social media to um do it um when i first started i jumped into all of it and it was just so fucking much so i had to turn it down And now that I turned it down, I found I'm making more money rather than doing all that and doing a crappy job at it. (laughs) That's awesome. I didn't even know any of that stuff was a bit, I mean, I guess I knew, but I didn't realize. So like, how do we get the sponsorships? You can reach out to people or like, um, what happened to me is my Instagram, once it blew up a little, they actually start reaching out, out to you and you just have to, have a conversation with them, kind of like bargain, see what they're offering. If mm-hmm. um, a lot of times you get a really fucking cool product, which is pretty awesome. Um, but you don't want to ever want to pay if they say, oh, buy this product um, and then leave a review. Nope, that is not an affiliation. You want to make sure they give you the money or send you the free product and then they'll pay you for it once you post it. Um, but yeah. Oh, that's uh, amazing information. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> That's so, thankfully, I make a lot of little extra side income. Mm. And then I guess um, that just brought me, gave me another idea too. Like another way you can make money um, through pole dance is developing a product, which is what um, um, Therapy of Bees News did. We had her interview. She made 
some amazing knee pads. She has a new bag out. Um, she's having a new shrug for when you do shoulder stands, which would be amazing because like shoulder stands suck. <laughs> she has that poor instructor teaching lesson plan book. Which yeah, is yeah. Yep, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, people are developing different hand grips too. Um, there's so many things like if you're more, um, you know, development minded person and you like to 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 make pole better through things, <laughs> you can do that and make money. Um, like for example, we have a bunch of free courses and now a paid course. And we also have, excuse me, our interactive posters, which are cool. Um, the we uh, So each poster is 13 by 19. They have 16 pole tricks and a QR code where you can scan and be brought to the tutorial and you can post it anywhere in your house. So different pro um, products like that, people really love it. Um, Body by Fran creates a lot of courses. Um, Jamie Wong, like pole dancer life coach, she um, does like what does she do? She does like the life coaching program, and with that, you get Zoom meetings, a whole plan to help you train based on what your needs are. So many different ways you can make products. There's the pole cards, which are cool. The PT book, um, pole. So PT. many books. Um, yeah. really is kind of just bringing out that creativity and being you like red wheat decided to make the posters it was so fucking excited like i don't think we've ever seen anybody make them <laughs> um <laughs> people love them now we're marketing them and we're slowly making a side income things like that <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah you just have to be be creative and like if you see like like oh man like like how um, Sarah thought that the shoulder stands sucked so much, she thought there would be a cool shrug. Like that's an amazing idea that that no one else is doing. That is necessary for pole dancers. So um, if you got those ideas, that would be another avenue where you can take pole, like behind the scenes. Yes. <laughs> um, then, go ahead. I, I was going to lead us into the next one. <laughs> so also behind the scenes we have music videos so <laughs> pole dancers are always amazing in music videos everyone should hire pole dancers to be in their music videos um musicians we're here for you we're ready uh, we have the <laughs> stage poles most of us all have the stage poles now um so you know hire us to be in your music videos and we know like a lot of different pole dancers have been featured in music videos and so that's a, a fun way to um, be a performer and, and perform pole dance and, you know, not have to be like a salesperson or <laughs> any of the other things, um, you know, and just do performing. And then. Love it. So true. <laughs> <laughs> and then in addition to music videos, you can also just be a performer. You can perform on stage. I know we've all seen Snoop Dogg has been so amazing hiring pole dancers for like years now. Um, and, and it's just such a good opportunity for, for dancers to like feel the rush of performing for a large group of people. Yeah. dollars And sometimes even ones too, which is always nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, like I said, the, we, everyone's at the stage poles now, so you can, you know, find out if the stage pole will fit in the performance space and set up performances for your students, your, your um, like teacher showcases, stuff like that. And, you know, make money doing that stuff. Um, music licensing, right? Cause you lose the money if you don't relearn. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah. We should mention that. And also about, you know, insurances for your students and, and everyone or whoever is performing on your stage pole. <laughs> Glad you said showcase because that is another way you can make money with Paul. Hold the showcase, um, mm -hmm. even if it's just a private one. But make sure you get those licensing rights because if they can creep up on you or use oh, thank you. <laughs> the royalty free music, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. If you use royalty free music, or if you if you get the permission from the musician, so like teaming up with a local mu musician who has their own music might be a really good fun way to present your art and their art in the same avenue is such a good idea we should do that <laughs> <laughs> we i thought we were planning on it with time <laughs> yes with time 
right now we do have our, our showcase planned for September. It's an online showcase, but um, it's free and we're not charging any money to enter or watch. So um, don't forget about that. <laughs> we're going to be calling for submissions at the end of August. So can't wait to see what everyone comes up with. Sorry, but you can't dog. make money doing that. <laughs> my dogs are barking. Uh, but That's okay. I'm excited for this free showcase. I am glad that you brought it up. I'm working on it on the upload for all of you. Did we post the first post on Instagram? Yes, last night I, I posted it, yeah. So make more, definitely post more. Um, but yeah, if you listen to last week's episode, you already know about it. I have to send out an email too to let people know. Now social media knows. Uh, but you probably just gave them the details on that. I am working on the upload feature for our website. Hopefully that'll be done. I'm praying in the next week. Um, but yeah, um, get those videos ready, have fun, edit them if you want. It doesn't have to be perfect. It could be like anywhere from a minute to like three minutes, whatever you like. I cannot wait. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, that's just a sidebar. You won't make money doing that. I mean, you, maybe you can use that video that you created for the showcase for other things and make money with it. But our showcase is not a money-making thing. <laughs> Sidebar. Now we're back. Back to different ways to make money with pole dance. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited for that showcase stuff. <laughs> but yeah. more ways to make money with pole Sorry, we have neighbors who are walking, so the dogs are going crazy. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> different ways to make money with pole dancing. Do you have another yeah, the, my last one that I had is workshops. And you can totally make money, you know, um, teaching workshops. So, you know, you, you should be a certified teacher. Or um, if you have, like, uh, a specialty that you have, you can set that up and, and market yourself as a workshop teacher. And you can either travel, if you, that's your thing, you want to travel. You can just plan where you want to, like, travel to, contact studio owners in the area see if they'll have you come in for a workshop and then you can literally plan a working vacation and you know travel and make money and that's a something that a lot of pole dancers do something that i want to do <laughs> in the future hopefully hopefully very soon um but yeah in addition to like if let's say you can't travel at this moment you can also set up workshops online you can set up like a whole series of them you can have people signing up um, all year round. Um, yeah. And you can make money just from your own home, home pole studio. And uh, yeah, it's a, a good way to make money. You could set your own prices. Um, you'll need your own insurance and all of that, your certifications, but it's pretty simple after all of that to get going. Love it. Um, I can't wait to start teaching workshops. But I mean, if you want us to come to your studio to be interviewed, we'll travel for that too. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I love these interviews, but it, I can't wait to like start meeting people again too, which would be awesome. <laughs> right, that would be cool if we could just set up somewhere and just like um, have pole dancers share a quick blurb about, you know, how their life is and what they're doing and Jeez. That'd be cool. Or even like <laughs> to like record and share like different pole performances or competitions on our on a future episode. That would be awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but the way to make money, which um just came to my head, which is crazy because we've been doing this a lot, is photography of pole, as most You're of us. Right. As I love that, sorry, popped out of nowhere. Um, as most of us know, we have the Don Q, Don Curry. He's absolutely amazing, and he is traveling and doing his thing, doing photography of Poe. And we also we have some people that you know, Marina, who's making money, starting to make money with pole pictures. Yeah, um, she's a. I mean, she still pole dances, but she's taking a break to you know, be a photographer and making money off of that. And, and you want someone who pole dances to be taking your picture because we don't want our pictures with the arm cut off or the, <laughs> the leg cut off. <laughs> but yeah, sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> but that is definitely another great way to make some money. And I guess which takes me to another one, which popped into my head, pole art, like drawing, like just handmade drawings. Um, 
they're really selling on like TikTok and the social media. Um, if you really utilize, if you really learn how to kind of funnel people through it, um, you can really make money off that nice art. A lot of people are looking for handmade stuff, handcrafted stuff, especially with things that relate to their hobby. And I don't, you know, I guess there are people who do like nice pole arts and they're still making money, <laughs> like pole cats. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The whole memes, I think, is a they a different kind of art, but they're still making money. Yeah, and like um Pony Poisson, she's got all of like those different circus cartoons that are so beautiful and cute. <laughs> yeah, like just um pole gifts, you know, like all of there's probably you can look up pole gifts on Etsy and it'll give you a whole bunch of, you know, different handmade and and things that um, are creative from pole dancers and they're trying to make money off of. So that is a great idea. I didn't even think about that before. <laughs> I've definitely bought some pole gifts. Like, uh, uh, who doesn't want a handmade illustration of, of them in their favorite pole move? Or like, you can get that made for a pole friend. Like, that's such a great gift for your pole friends. Yeah. <laughs> uh what else? I think when we talked about online, we brought up like ebooks and e courses and stuff. That's a good revenue system. Um, yeah. Courses we talked about. Right. Like if you're a designer, you can like create yeah. um, maybe like digital designs of pole dancers and like memes and stuff like that. You can figure out how to monetize that. Yeah. <laughs> or if you have some money and want to get into realty, I just watched a crazy show on Netflix, How to Build a Sex Room. You can be the <laughs> show how to build the pole studio <laughs> we, <laughs> that's so funny um go into um how do you say if you have that little chunk of change i know not everybody does buy your studio create it beautifully and then sell it to someone who wants a pole studio who doesn't want to do all that work different ways oh my god it really is just being creative <laughs> yes yeah yeah or even like um i'm gonna reveal a an idea that I had because I'm probably not going to be, be able to get to do it very soon but like if you find like a small space small enough to put like uh, one pole you could literally turn that into some sort of like social media like hangout place where people would come in you would design the space a certain way they would come in and like take social media photos on your awesome pole space like it's just a cool idea that I thought of because like and you could theme it out <laughs> you can make it so cool you could like put cameras and all like everything it would be so cool to just like have that um so steal my idea make that space and i will purchase an hour of time in this space just to like take photos and videos of myself in it because i think it would be really cool <laughs> what do you think of that chris i think that's an amazing idea um it goes back an idea rob and i had of like starting like a little kind of like a cabaret bar like during the day it's like a restaurant chill and then at night you get the more exotic the performance team some pole dancing a bar things like that. yeah <laughs> um this is mine and nate's dream as well <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> We should combine somehow and make this happen. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's another thing. yeah. Like make like a whole experience, including pole dance. Like that's always been a, a dream to like, to like make that. Cause how cool it would be to, to like work in a place like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, and to have, you know, all different types of pole dancers too. Like all the, everyone. <laughs> have another meeting privately about that. <laughs> yes. Let's do it. Steal that idea, but we'll also do it too. <laughs> yeah, I'll live in a new area, a different area. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> Another way to make money, which I completely forgot, and it's pretty much what we do, is like, um, if you have technical skills, start like doing things um, for marketing or even like bringing certain post studios to the online platform, like um, social media design, website design. Um, you could do things like that for post studios and make money like that. Um, a lot of studio owners, some of them aren't as tech savvy and they, or they're just so busy and they can't focus on that. So they do need that help. Um, I mean, you can look around on Instagram or TikTok. People are always looking. You can ask by word of mouth. People can recommend you, or you can go on apps like Fiverr or things like that, entrepreneur apps and find things like that. 
Um, but yeah, that's a great way to do it. Use your tech skills. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you're interested, because we offer a lot of online classes at our studio, if you have any questions about it, we'd be happy to, you know, set up a meeting where we could talk to you about how to add online classes to your studio. Because I think I said in our last episode, it was a little frustrating at the beginning. So if you have some guidance, it takes that frustration out of it and makes it really easy to just like plug in and teach your class just with the thing in your ear. I think that would be a good making opportunity for us, how to bring your studio to the online world or like two, three hour workshop. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then we'll have to think of some sort of tech support help because as we know, <laughs> Every time Zoom does an update randomly, right when you're trying to start a class. <laughs> uh, goodness, what other ways? So many different ways. I'm sure we missed some and you'll probably bring it up, but it really is just being creative and remembering who you're there for. Because um, a lot of times we say, I'm going to do this for me because I like it. I like it. And even now I forget, we forget um, it's not about us. It's about what? they want to see our fans our students our our poll watchers um it's not like yeah think of them not you and it was really hard for me to learn that when i started um but i found once it finally clicked in everything started changing my content became better there was more engagement i'm making more money it wasn't about me it was about serving my audience that's interesting that you should say that because I would have thought it would be the other way around because if you had something that was unique that people didn't know that they needed yet. See, that's where <laughs> that's is because you want to be you and be authentic, but be, and that's where that comes in. Be you, be authentic, be different. Yeah. With that being different, create content for your audience because that's why that's they- true. Oh my gosh, you're so, okay, now I see it because um, this is, Something that I think about a lot of times when I watch, not too much pole dance, because I'm always like super impressed with pole dance. But a lot of times when I watch like modern dance, it'll be like really self-serving for the dancer. And it, and it feels mostly good for the dancer doing the dance. But for the person watching it, um, maybe it's not so, I'm not really connected as much. Um, so yeah, like that, that would not be something that you would really monetize because people are not going to pay for to watch you feel good about yourself <laughs> even comes to things as like courses like i don't know how many times i have been so pissed that i paid for a course and i'm like yes i'm gonna get an amazing thing and then it's like literally a one-page ebook with a link for like an hour class and i'm like why the fuck did i pay this money it was yeah. they promoted it like crazy and it was just a quick money scheme um that was that's like self-serving you really want to make sure you're giving the audience everything. <laughs> yes. It's hard to learn because it's like you said, you want to be you, you want to be authentic, you want to be unique. But how do you share that with other people so they love it? They want to keep coming back. Yeah, yeah. That's Thank you for bringing all that up and for clarifying it because that is such a difference between like, and you can get stuck in the like, why doesn't anyone like me? Yes. sort of thing and then you have to really like take a step back and 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 have someone else look at you <laughs> and tell you what's going on if you're not able to see um why other people wouldn't like your stuff yeah and it could really be a learning curve and you can really enter a dark place like you said why don't they like me what am i doing wrong like i'm just bad at this i don't want to continue like this isn't my path um, but stick with it and just always remember, be you, be unique, but also remember your audience because they're the ones who are following you, who are returning, who love you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that, that makes me want to bring up another point about, um, this is something that I struggle with every day, um, being a dancer and a business owner. It's so hard to like, not take everything personally because um as dancers we're usually more emotional i guess than than regular people and we take everything so personally at least i 
take everything so personally. <laughs> so it's, it's um, you know, like I said, it's a constant struggle of, of being business Mandy and pole dancer Mandy. So that's something that you have to really think about um, when you start to monetize the thing that you love because they'll, you still have to be like pole dancer Mandy <laughs> and keep all of the things that make you feel good and still have it fun, but also be really smart and, um, you know, make money and not like, like when I started out giving everything up for free because I'm so giving and I love to share. But, you know, in capitalism, we need to make money. <laughs> so until capitalism is over, um, we have to figure out how to like wear the two hats. I'm putting it out there now. We need to start the bartering system again. Let's all start bartering. I oh got, gosh. got that. <laughs> I would love it. Like, yeah, if because we all have our own special talents and things to offer. And those things change all the time, too. Um, so we have to like think about about that for the future. And, you know, pole dancers, we're going to change the world. <laughs> <laughs> um any other ways to make money i think that's it oh my goodness we discussed a lot yeah yeah and even more more came to us as we were going through and and like i mentioned at the beginning there'll probably be even more after we finish this episode we'll think of so we'll try to include those and if we m miss anything that's really burning in your heart that you need to express let us know and we can um share that as well and maybe make another episode about other ways you can make money as as we evolve Feel free to email us in the comments or DM us. Um, yes. And of course, like this podcast episode or this YouTube episode if you're watching. And of course, share it so more either pole dancers can find us or people who need this information who are not sure if they want to pole dance or just because we need to spread the information. Yes. <laughs> Especially, <laughs> in the middle, I feel like we're when it comes to pole dancing, it's not like other countries like it should be, which is sad. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and yeah, it, even like the, I know this is a sidebar, <laughs> insurance in the United States will not, um, I haven't found one that covers anyone under the age of 18, which is really concerning um, because it, it's. Kids, I, want, I know so yeah. many. Yeah. And the fact that insurance companies won't pay for it is upsetting <laughs> um, because why won't they? And we'll think about that, but we know why they won't. Opportunity to make money. You can get certified to give insurance and give insurance for pole dancing studios for kids. <laughs> Not for because us. They're still in the, they're still in the Puritan ages. That's why. Oh, I'm just saying another way to make <laughs> certified in insurance and start handing out. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. Like if you're an insurance pole dancer, please, please do this um, because it's necessary. There's, I know for, for our, our area, there's plenty of um, wannabe pullers that are under the age of 18 and they're just like waiting and waiting. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Don't make those opportunities. Um, thank you for watching as always episode 26. And more yes. <laughs> <laughs> have a new feature um i need to add it to our website but we um we'll add it below in the notes um if you want to be interviewed or know someone who wants to be interviewed you can now schedule an interview with us um, we have a um thanks to other pole dancers who helped us we have a new little scheduling thing that will allow you to schedule an interview um, it has our availability and you pick a time. If those times don't work for you, reach out because I know some of you are in different countries, which is also welcome. Um, but we can definitely make something work. Um, we'll have that like in the bottom. Um, just to make it easier, um, I know some people are afraid to reach out, but now you can just sign up and have that appointment and we'll interview you. I'm so excited for this. I can't wait. <laughs> Please, when you go to use this um, scheduler, um, maybe give us like a week in advance notice of the interview. Don't choose like tomorrow um, for, for your interview time, even though it might work for you. Um, Cause we still need to, you know, get to know who you are first. And um, so we know what to ask you, but we would love, um, especially pole dance students. Um, we've interviewed a lot of pole dance stars. And while it's so amazing to, you know, hear everyone's story, we want to hear a lot of stories from pole dancers too. So don't be shy. <laughs>
Um, share your story. Yeah. Oh, Chris, you're on mute. <laughs> I think also when you sign up for an appointment, you can give us a little bio description. It offers a little description. So feel free to utilize that too. Perfect. Yeah, that would be really helpful to just um, get a little blurb about you and know what type of questions to ask. And yeah. Yeah. Can't wait. So excited. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Oh my goodness, so many things. I think that's, I think that's it. Last episode, we covered everything we covered. So yeah. We <laughs> yeah, if you missed our last episode, we covered all the tools mostly that we offer uh, for, um, from Poll on the Call. So check that out. You can also check out our website for all of the tools. Um, yeah, and that's it. Whoa. Make money. Make money doing pole dance. Yes. Or we'll figure out how to barter. <laughs> I love it. I, this was a fun episode. Yes. <laughs> right? And there's a lot of ways. There's a lot more than I actually thought. Yes. Be creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And team up team up with other artists too. Like, um, I don't know. There was a performance that we did in college that was one of my favorites. And it was called Art Jam. And it was like dancers, musicians, artists. Um, everyone was all together and we all presented on the same night. Um, that would be cool. 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 <laughs> and get all different types of, um, you know, different people who like different art to be involved now in pole dance and, and clear the stigma Thanks. of pole dance because pole dance is for everyone. And yeah, not just Thanks. for strippers. <laughs> And if you want us to be interviewed, like if you have your own podcast or something and want to get to know us, let us know. We down for you too. <laughs> we love to talk. <laughs> Although if you watch all our episodes, I'm sure you'll get to know a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, and take our classes too online too. If you if you like who we are and we're um, your kind of style and you want to see what our class is about, we have our online classes um, offered from Pole and Wall, and you can take them. You can either attend them live or you can sign up and attend um, anytime during the week, and you can ask us questions, and we'll comment back to you, and it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hope to see you. Thank you so much. Always yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this episode 26. Uh, I'm creating out. <laughs> I guess we are signing <laughs> Did you, you said you're Chris Rivers? <laughs> and I'm Mandy Mac. Yeah, we are excited. Uh, oh, she got nice heels today. Yeah. So I'm on red one. <laughs> yes. I almost wore the red one. But I only lift my legs that high. I got a breeze and everything fell out. I know. I was like. <laughs> <laughs>